Let's take a look at some information in charts on Dash for Brave New Coin. Dash is an optional privacy coin, similar in ways to Zcash, similar in ways to Decred. Had a lot of backing and marketing by Roger Ver in the early days. It is a hybrid proof of work, proof of stake coin. So we got to look at the hash rate, the staking stats. Hash rate for Dash has declined since October 2020, just continuously. There was a big dip in June, possibly China related. It doesn't look like hash rate has really picked up yet, despite uh, a new al a new ASIC uh, getting released October 2021. Uh, this profitability is at four cents per kilowatt hour, which is what most industrial miners get for electricity. So this is incredibly profitable, even though it's hybrid proof of work, proof of stake. The question is whether or not you can actually get these shipped to you due to shipping issues going on right now. I don't really know the inside baseball on Bitmain ASIC shipping, but that, that'd be one concern I have. But it's still good profitability. Uh, and then you can, you can always turn around and stake it after you get the proof of work reward. For staking anything with master nodes, you have to look at the amount of master nodes because that is a significant supply lockup. Now, it's not a long term supply lockup, it's a liquid lockup, but it does give you somewhat of a rough idea of how much Dash is floating around. If master nodes are increasing, that means more supply is getting soaked into not being in the float and should therefore be bullish, especially if you're in a bullish environment. Masternodes since 2018 really haven't done too much. We zoom in. Can we zoom in? Yeah, I think we can zoom in a little bit. Maybe not. There we go. Um, haven't really done too much. They're around 4,500 since 2018. So not a lot of changes there. Not a lot of changes with price either. Staking stats uh, adjusted are less than 1%, which is much worse than you, what you'd get for USDC or USDT right now, which is at 7 to 8% on Comp and Ave. So for most people, with a significant amount of capital who don't want to get exposed to volatility risk with Dash, they would much rather buy USDC if you're in the US or buy Tether if you're not, stake it on Ave, Comp, Yearn, whatever, and get interest from it through that mechanism. Dash, to me, doesn't have a bright enough future to encourage people to try to get interest on a non-competitive interest rate <laughs> compared to most things right now. Looking at the issuance for Dash, it's still slightly on the higher side. It's lower than Zcash. It's lower than Grin. It's at 5% there in the darker blue. Still above ETH, LTC, Doge, BTC, and Monero. Monero's, for me, the gold standard of privacy, the gold standard of low inflation. The issue with privacy coins, including Dash, including Monero, including Zcash, they have a hard, hard time getting listed and staying listed, especially in a rough regulatory environment because of the privacy concerns or privacy obfuscation, I should say, despite the fact that Zcash and Dash are easily figured out by chain analysis companies. Monero, not so much. Monero, I can understand why it's not listed anywhere because from a regulatory perspective, it's a nightmare because it's that good at privacy. But the others, you can easily figure out what's going on. So, you know, I can't pull up the privacy transaction stats because the websites are down for that right now. Uh, but in general, those stats aren't amazing for Dash. It's not like some super majority of the network usually a lower percentage of transactions. Um, and if we look at transaction counts since May, I mean, they've just absolutely cratered, absolutely cratered. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. I can't zoom out with this because they do a lot of stress testing on the chain and that shows up on the data here. But it looks like since 2017, we had been on an upward trend of transaction counts. And then somebody turned something off recently because that is a massive cliff down to what is a multi-year low. That's what, eight, ten thousand last time. Yeah, so it's since December 2018. That is not good for anything. So it's hard to be bullish on that. Active transaction or mean transaction values also on the decline there. But those transaction counts are gruesome. On the flip side, NVT at all-time low. So to me, again, this just illustrates NVT maybe not such a great metric for coins that have much more going on than Bitcoin. Bitcoin's super transparent. There's no private transactions. There's no nothing other than Lightning, which is going to muck up uh, NVT. But one thing that could be happening with the transaction counts is they've gone private in a significant way. Um, I'd have to look more into that, I guess. But 
that would be one cause for this. If more of the freely discoverable transaction count has gone to the private side of things, that's going to not show up here. You know, that's one thing that could be happening. Active addresses also significantly declining from highs here. They had hit an all time high in May, down by 50% or more since then. Multi year low, also not bullish for any coin when you see that sort of thing. MVRV is a measure of market cap versus realized cap in the fill here. And for most coins, this tops out on a 2x multiple. You can see we hit a 2 to 3x early on 2014, hit a 2 to 3x in 2017, 2018. We hit a 2x um, most recently in May 2021. And currently we're sub 0.9. The ultimate buy zone is anything sub 0.5 based on back testing here. Anytime MVRV is near 0.5 or less, that's been a pretty decent buy over the long term. So as far as upside from here, it does look like it has potential for room to 2x on the MVRV, um, but there's no, no real signal per se at the moment other than there's plenty of upside, still a little bit of downside, doesn't really tell you much. Um, I would watch this if Dash goes super bullish in Q, end of Q4, early Q1, as alts tend to get rotated into. I would be watching this every day. If Dash is pushing highs, I would be watching MVRV every day until it's above two, until it's above three. If it gets above four, I'd be selling, selling, selling because this is an excellent indicator uh, for tops and bottoms, especially in, in a bull market euphoria situation. Dash over the past five years, Google Trends basically zeroed out to multi-year lows or multi-month lows to be fair, but um, back to where it was sitting. Not much going on. I don't hear much about Dash in general. Uh, I know they have a marketing component to it. They have a treasury, they have governance. I didn't talk about any of that stuff. I don't think most people care, honestly. That's just kind of how it is. Until there's some massive upheaval with opinions about certain things in the protocol, unless you're a deep community member in Dash, you're not going to care about governance or treasury. You're just not. I'm happy that people are getting paid to do what they do. And that's about as far as it goes for me. Flipping here's the technicals. This is the one year MA in the green. This is five times that in the red. This is on Poloniex because they have the most data. And how this works is it's an oscillator. Buy zone is in the green, sell zone in the red. And Monero kind of looked like this in 2017 as well, where it just cruised above the midline in the white uh, to the red for months, basically the entire year, right? I don't know if that can ever happen again because there's so many more altcoins. There's so many more places for people to gamble. China's gone now. And you can see most recently, we didn't even hit the multiple. In uh, May, we only hit the midline. So we did tap the green, the buy zone a couple times here over the past few weeks. For me, 500 to 1K is feasible in, in the late Q4 if everything's bullish. Uh, 500 for sure. Uh, 1,000 would be dependent on how euphoria, how euphoric things get, depending on if people have access to Dash on the exchange but I like 500 easily if crypto holds bullish in Q4. On the 5200, it's just kind of a sloppy mess, crisscross over and over and over again, no real signal there. Uh, yearly pivots here have resistance kind of all the way up until 420. We're well above the VPVR volume support. Uh, RSI doesn't help you much, volume doesn't help you much because on Polo there isn't really any volume. So I definitely wait, if I was trading this, I would wait for a strong push above the 200 width a 5200 cross bullish. Even on the cloud, it's telling you wait until this thing's above 220, 215 into late October at the very least against the USD pair. And then we will talk about 300 plus. So it's very much an if this, then that situation. I just zoomed out. I really like 500 on the multiplier midline. Dash BTC is an ugly chart uh, for a variety of reasons. Um, the most stark and stunning being this head and shoulders here, which people will tell you cannot happen at the bottom of a downtrend. And I'm here to tell you, yes, it can. It's happening right now on Dash. It's happened on oil. It can happen anywhere, okay? I promise you this. You're not going to read about that in textbooks. You're not going to read about that on, on websites, uh, but it happens. And when it does, it is the ultimate bearish death knell, see you later situation. Um, the scale's all messed up here, but I like this back to multi-year lows. Um, there's been a multi-year downtrend ever since the diamond top. This looks about as weak as it could look. There's no bull div, nothing here. This should go lower. This should go for multi-year lows. It should. At that point in time, when it does, as a trader, 
you got to be excited because you know what to do. You know what to look for when you get multi-year lows on a bull div. You start rotating in, right? I don't like Dash. I think it's mostly not for me. <laughs> but, but on technicals, if we do get multi-year lows with a bull div that lasts for more than a week, that is a strong sign to at least tease a little bit of, of you know, rotation into into Dash from the BTC land because the upside potential becomes enormous at that point. What you need here now is you need capitulation, big volume wick, bull div. You need everybody to throw up their hands and say, okay, I'm finally buying BTC. I've held Dash for five years. I've had enough, right? That's at that time is when you'll see a good opportunity to rotate from BTC. Uh, something else you may see, may not, may not, is a master node dipped significant, you know, enough to make like Twitter headlines or whatever. You want to see this chart dip to multi-year lows too, because that means a bunch of supply just got, unlo got unlocked and a bunch of people are selling or one person is selling. These are all just things to potentially look for, right? I don't know if it'll happen, but something to look for during capitulation. So I like buying lows there. Uh, Dash ETH looks, <laughs> uh, looks maybe the worst thing I've ever seen. That, that's unfair. It looks, it looks bad, right? Um, it's never really made any highs that it's been able to hold on to just continued to fall. And there's really no reason to hold dash over ETH. And that's clear on the fundamentals anyway. So this should continue to push lower on low volume. Maybe you get a bull div here in a Q4 when ETH goes to 510k. I don't know, but uh, now is not the time to rotate into, <laughs> into dash uh, from ETH. So I don't play altcoins a lot personally, but when I do, it's when they are in actual absolute core capitulation land because that is the easiest of trades the easiest of mean reversion reversals typically right it's not a guarantee but that's what you're looking for lastly i'll just mention the eptc fund and DeFi portfolio i'm trading for tech me capital on enzyme.finance a non-custodial portfolio management tool where you can send eth or usdc or just watch what i'm doing you can see everything including aum performance allocation you can see all the vaults i'm in here on urine comp and ave as well as the trades in the trades tab down below that's all I have for this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.